and welcome you all again to our overview webinar. What we're trying to achieve today is to showcase what the Zero Project Call for Nominations 2023 is about, talking about the themes, the topics, and the subtopics within it, outlining the added value of nominating and becoming a Zero Project awardee, and also importantly stressing to you as the potential nominee what to focus on, good practices to use when nominating, what we would like to see, and how you can increase your chance of a successful nomination. In terms of housekeeping rules, I touched upon the majority of uh, the things are here. Again, to underline, we have a moderated chat. Our Zero Project team members will be introducing themselves in this chat. They will be sharing um, contact details as well. And specifically, we also, if you do not want to follow the captions in the Zoom call, we have a standalone web browser window where you can do so. And one of my team members will post the link to that standalone, uh, standalone caption window. Again, I ask you to keep your camera and audio off and we'll jump right into it. What will we be talking about today? I touched upon some of the issues. This will be an introduction to the Zero Project Call for Nominations. We'll talk a bit about the nomination tool, certain deadlines to keep in mind, and general how the award journey looks like. What happens after you nominate? What are the next steps? And what can you expect joining the Zero Project, uh, so to say, universe with your nomination? This year, the Zero Project Call for Nominations 2023 First of all, why are we talking about 2023? With us, our research cycle is always forward looking. So the nomination you put down this year will be valid for 2023, which is when you will receive your award formally at the Zero Project Conference at the United Nations in February, 2023. We are looking at three key topics this year, independent living, political participation, and ICT. And I'll go into detail on what those mean. But as I do so, I encourage you also to look at our Zero Project Call for Nominations website, which includes all these topics and subtopics with clear definitions, with clear information on the type of nominations we're looking for, and also indications of certain nominations we're not looking for or not considering this year. We have a very focused research cycle. And therefore, we want you to make a nomination out of a standpoint of information. And therefore, please do look at that website. We put a lot of effort into it, and it contains a lot of very useful information. Now, overall, when we talk about Zero Project awardees and the type of practices and policies we award, we come back to the three pillars. So visually in this slide, you see three pillars which symbolize the key aspects of what we're looking for in every nomination. The first pillar is innovation. And for us, innovation is always seen in a sociocultural context. We look at each and every nomination from the region and the area it is nominated from. And together with our peer review experts, we understand, is there an element innovation in this nomination? The second pillar is impact. Can you point to qualitative, so data and quantitative data, which shows that you have had impact for persons with disabilities with your practice or policy? And third point is the idea of scalability and replication. Can this practice or policy be grown or replicated elsewhere? So as you're thinking about your nomination and the language you want to use to describe that nomination, Think about how the narrative and what you're telling us about your practice and policy ties back to innovation, impact, and scalability. Now, the Zero Project in and of itself works across all disabilities and all continents. This applies also to the types of nominations and the sectors we want to attract. The solutions which we're looking for can relate to multiple or several disabilities and severe disabilities. We're looking at gender equality, sexual orientation, psychosocial disabilities, 
mental health. These are all aspects we want to consider and reflect in our nominations. So what the message we're trying to send to you, even if perhaps you might have some hesitation of, is the zero project or the call for nominations something for me, that we are open to your nomination from all sectors and all industries. We have sector heads here at the zero project from civil society, public sector, such as myself, the business sector, and also ICT. So we really take a holistic and inclusive overview uh, into consideration when looking at our nominations. And we want our nominations to reflect that diversity. Um, also geographically speaking, and then we're also very proud that of the first four nominations we've already received, three have come from the African continent, from countries such as Sierra Leone and Somalia. So we really are looking at geographic representation, racial representation, gender representation, in our nominations and hopefully together with you and your networks and also sharing this call, we can achieve that objective. Now we'll go into detail on the specific uh, topics of this year's call, but I kind of wanted to uh, boil down on the individual essences within the topics. So when we're talking about independent living, Specifically for us, what we're looking for is practices and policies which don't only remove barriers, but really point to the element of giving persons with disabilities freedom of choice. Can he or she decide where to live by herself? If yes, that is a topic and a nomination we want to hear of. And at the same time, going to the political participation, is the person actively able to participate in public life, express his or her opinions, become a thought leader, become a, a political leader, and also encourage others in a sustainable fashion to do so. And then ICT, which is, if you look at our website, boiled down into 12 subtopics, ranging from AI to 3D printing and other topics. And we'll hear from our ICT head and lead, Wilfred Kainz, later on specifically the ICT solutions that we are looking for this year. Within independent living, these are the subtopics we want you to be aware of. And again, the detail of what these mean down to the very clear definitions you can find on our Zero Project uh, call for nominations website. But within independent living, what we're looking for is deinstitutionalization, supported living, early childhood intervention, personal assistance, the role of assistive technology and it can play to remove barriers, the idea from guardianship to decision-making, inclusion and right, rights-based approaches, self-employment and microfinance, and within microfinance, also the burgeoning field of cryptocurrencies and how that can play a role in removing barriers for persons with disabilities, and also the idea of moving away from sheltered employment. So if you know of any practices or policies you yourself have spearheaded or led, or of people who have done so, bring it forward, nominate. We want to hear from you, and you will also receive valuable feedback from our peer review members as a part of that nomination. And to also make your life a bit easier to understand, okay, what does it mean, independent living, and what have we awarded in the past, or what have we highlighted as good practices? My colleague, uh, we'll post a link right now of former awardees in the chat window. Take the time to look at these former awardees to understand what innovation impact and scalability we saw within the project. Within our fact sheet, it's very clearly lined out in um, subjects and paragraphs. And to see how maybe what someone in Kazakhstan or someone in, in England has done is maybe similar to what you have been doing in, with your practice. And therefore that might encourage you or give you the motivation to come forward and to nominate. Now in regards to political participation, what we are looking for is as mentioned, not only the element of political leadership and also self-representation, but the ideas of what are the cornerstones of democracy, voter and civic education, access to justice, the ability to participate in public life, and anything which has enabled that, and this can be both a practice from also the private sector or the public sector, we want to hear about. This can often also be an overlap between an ICT-centric solution, which has enabled 
access to justice or ICT centric solution, which has enabled more voters to participate in public life and to cast their vote. We want to hear about that. And as mentioned, also for this category, we will post links into the chat of former awardees which have been recognized for their work within political participation. So you can see and understand the types of nominations we're looking for. And hopefully, as mentioned, this gives you the, the impetus to come forward and to nominate this year. And now I would like to pass on to my colleague, Wilfred Kainz, who is our head of research and also sector head for ICT. And he will talk a bit about specifically what we are looking for when it comes to ICT solutions. Good afternoon and, uh, and thank you, Robin, for the, for the introduction. Uh, a couple of years ago, we decided uh, to include ICT uh, nominations each year. Uh, irrespective of the special topic we're pursuing, uh, pursuing nominations. Why is that? Because information and communication technology is not only dynamic uh, and very innovative, but it brings almost instant gratification and immediate benefits for persons with disabilities. And so this is why we have decided uh, to include ICT in each call. And this is also overlapping. So this year, if we apply for this field, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, also centered around independent living and political participation, but it also could also be uh, accessibility, education, uh, or employment. So the ICT uh, is all encompassing, and uh, we have divided. And I, I give you some examples of the of the subtopics like orientation systems or computer steering technologies. There's mobile services and smartphone apps. There is robotics. There is the Internet of Things, which getting uh, more and more important is variables. Uh, so there's a bunch of, uh, of let's say, preset categories. But if you, if your product or your service doesn't fit into that category, uh, uh, nominate all the same uh, because we want to learn and uh, and if necessary, we we need we can also expand uh, the subtopic. The subtopics uh, you find in the in the in the various informations are just a, basically a compilation of the of the issues we have been dealing. Uh, with the past, but since we're dealing with uh, and looking for innovations, uh, so don't be shy. Just uh, read through the uh, denomination platform and uh, and, uh, and and apply. Thank you for that, Wilfred. And I would love to now pass on the stage to our head of the civil society, Samita Kunushakaran, who will take us through the remainder um, and the second half of this PowerPoint presentation. And as I said, we want to be quick and concise in order to give you the maximum amount of time for Q&A. And uh, Sue, please take it from here. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, just by way of a very quick introduction. Uh, my name is Sumita and I'm the Civil Society Manager. And for this year, um, we're having quite a few nominations from civil society, and I'm here to kind of take you through the nomination tool. So one exciting thing that we have this year is that we have uh, information on, on nominations that you can download on uh, six different languages. You can see right there, it's English, uh, German, Spanish, French, um, Arabic, as well as Russian. And so we would urge you to download these the information one page slides in your most comfortable language. However, the nomination tool is available as well, sorry, as well in the six languages. Um, I will be prompting my colleague on the slides, and so please bear with me when I say next slide. Thank you. Um, so this is essentially what the nomination tool will look like. We do urge you, when you do submit your information for your projects and your practices, please provide as much information as possible. This includes qualitative data, quantitative data, as much information as you can, um, as much information as you can. And sorry, I, I'm just getting a note from my colleagues here because this information will be very helpful in us understanding the growth and the scalability of your projects. So here's an example of Be My Eyes. This is a free mobile app and you can see the level of detail that they go into. Um, if I could just, sorry, just pause one second. There's quite a bit of movement here in the office. Sorry, I've just been given the cue to slow down a little. 
um, for Patricia. So I will slow down. Um, so one key information here is an example of Be My Eyes. You can see the level of detail that they go into. Um, please provide as much information as you can, and this will allow us, the peer reviewers, the experts, as well as the judging panel, to know everything about your nominated policy and practice. Next slide. <clears throat> so what do you have to prepare? Very four quick points. Um, the language that speaks to innovation, impact, and scalability. Like I mentioned earlier, this also relates to facts and figures, as much quantitative data as possible. If you would like to upload um, annual reports, um, information about previous awards that you've received, even from the Zero Project, please do go ahead and add this information in there. Um, this can also include handbooks and guidelines. We would also love to know more about your project in practice, and this means visualizing it. So please upload any high quality photos that we can also use to uh, publicize on our social media platforms, as well as videos. And this can be videos of the policy or practice uh, as it's being done, or it can even be a video of a person talking about the practice, either a beneficiary, an advocate, or someone from your organization themselves. So what are some good practices that you can do when, when nominating your policy and practice? Please do take the time to prepare and answer all the mandatory questions exhaustively. You can also, as a reminder, you can also save your nomination. So you do not have to nominate everything at one go. You can always take a look, come back to it, save it before you submit it to us at the final go. Please provide us with links to specific pages on your website. Also, please provide pitch or overview decks. One pages are incredibly helpful for us to understand the nominated practice at a, at a single glance. Reports, like I mentioned earlier, is also helpful. Any external sources, such as press articles featuring the solution, will also help us understand the scale and the growth of the solution. Videos and pictures in high resolution is incredibly useful. And lastly, as well as any material that shows the impact, innovation, and scalability of your solution. This final point is exceptionally important is because part of the Zero Project Awards is always applicable for the Ashoka Impact Transfer Awards. And this is a six month accelerator program that we provide to a number of promising projects that would like to scale, grow and replicate in internationally or within their own countries. So here are some examples of some good practices. Um, you can see lots of pictures, easy to digest information. This is exactly what we need. Next slide. And as for the deadline, this is the most important information. Our deadline is June 19th, 2022. You have 38 days to go. Please do not wait until the last minute in case you face any technical issues. We do urge you to start your nomination process today in itself. Thank you. And this is the awardee journey. So essentially we are now uh, in May when Zero Call has opened. And in June 19th, the, the nomination cycle will close. Between May and August, we have the selection process through our peer review expert panel. Um, final decisions will be made in September and all awardees will be um, announced in December. And then the highlight of the season will be the Zero Project Conference that's, that's taking place in February, 2023. So what are some added values that the awardees will receive? Well, one thing is the international recognition. Um, secondly, the one that we are most excited about is an invitation to present at the Zero Project Conference at the United Nations in itself. And this is gonna be a, quite a stellar year for us because it's the 10th year anniversary of the Zero Project Awards. You will also gain access to a worldwide network of experts. And as I mentioned earlier, for opportunities to scale internationally through the Impact Transfer Program. And with that, this is a link that you can submit your zero call nominations to. Uh, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to send it in the chat and my team here will be more than happy to get back to you. Otherwise, I'll hand it over to my colleague Robin for the Q&A segment of this session. Thank you. Thank you, Sumita. And as we promised you, almost actually ahead of time, we now have over 35 minutes, which we would love to dedicate 
to your questions and answers. We have Wilfred Kainz with us right to the right of me, who will be able to answer any questions related to ICT. You just heard from Sumita, our civil society head, but also opposite from her is Anna Kunigs, Ada, our business sector um, representatives, as well as our two research assistants, uh, Raz and Maria, who will be able to answer your questions in the chat window. So I would love to open the floor both to questions in the chat window or to anyone who wants to make a verbal intervention. And I would ask the person to raise their virtual hand in the Zoom call, and um, I will ask them to then put on their video and camera and ask for the questions. Those who feel more comfortable to just ask the questions verbally without the camera, feel free to do so as well. So I will have uh, and start to look around if there are any virtual hands. So please feel free to uh, ask away about the Zero Project call for nominations. I see there's a question in the chat. I will. So I see there's uh, one question from uh, Sabina Tsela who mentions that she's just at the beginning of her project and she's asking herself whether to nominate or not, especially since she doesn't have so many reports or additional information um, at her disposal. In general, what we would encourage is you to nominate regardless. The reason why is, and this was alluded to in our presentation, is we have, I'm drawing a blank here, sorry. We have a peer review process. Specifically what that means is as you submit your nominations, the first stage of this multi-stage review process is a peer review stage. This is where external experts, so experts who are not affiliated with the Zero Project are brought in to review your project. So regardless of the outcome, you will receive very valuable feedback on where experts see the stage and the progress of your practice or policy. And I think this is especially if you're at the beginning of your journey, very valuable. Of course, we pointed to good practices and awardees who have been successful in what they have presented. And we understand that everyone's journey is different. Some will have more reports, some will have less, some will have more photos and videos, some will have less. Regardless, we think nominate, tell us your journey, give us a good narrative which points to impact, which points to innovation and which points to scalability. And we would be honored to receive your nomination. I'm looking at Sue and um, we'll give her the floor since she has some feedback in this regard. Thanks, Robin. Um, so just to add to Robin's point before I move on to the next question. Yes, please include as much information as you have at hand. Um, a lot of our expert panel uh, judges are informed in the growth stages of each project. So just because your project has just started does not mean that it's not up for nomination. So please do submit as much information as you can. Thank you. Um, I'm now looking at Catherine's question that asked, uh, can we submit more than one nomination? Yes, you absolutely can. Um, there is no limit to the number of nominations that an organization can submit. We only do ask that each project or practice that you're nominating, nominating has only one submission each. So if you have an organization that runs three different programs on independent living and political participation, please feel free to sub make three submissions for each of these practices. Um, Yes, there's also a question here by Leslie. Is there a preference for projects outside of Europe? There is absolutely no preference whether they are in Europe, outside of Europe. All of the projects are taken on a neutral standpoint. We do try to look for diversity as much as possible, uh, whether in the type of projects, the areas that they're reaching out to, the types of people that they're reaching out to, as well as the different economic classes that they're reaching out to. So. Please, when we say do make your project as informative as possible, this is where the judging criteria comes in, not where the project is from. Thank you. And I would love to take that cue in regard to our global reach and take Emi Aizawa's uh, question in regards to if an application is written in Spanish, will it be machine translated into English for the reviewers? So we actually have a sister foundation, Fundación Descubreme, 
which runs the Zero Project Latin America franchise. And they help us with the translation and also with the review of these nominations. So all Spanish nominations will be reviewed by native speakers, just uh, as a heads up to, to Amy as well. And um, I'm looking also at Iwan Aswad's question in regards to if someone is able to nominate, if he or she has either presented um, presented a, a practice at another conference or submitted a practice to another grant. Absolutely, there are no uh, conflicts with nominating to the Zero Project. A lot actually of our nominees have been awarded by other foundations or grants and usually then also have a track record to point to. So to, to kind of reiterate the second pillar impact, impact is also shown by awards you've received in the past, challenges perhaps you have won, um, conferences at which you have presented this uh, solution or handbook. So definitely point to those um, instances rather than hiding them, bring them to the forefront because this again for us shows and tells the entire story. And I see Ranilo um, Sorongon has a question and has raised her hand. Ranilo, please uh, come in. Yeah. Uh, hi. We can hear you, Ranilo. Yeah. Please go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Good morning. I'm I'm Ranilo. If we can submit no um, a nomination on the participation of children with disabilities. So my question is, is there a category, like for example, adults with disability, as well as children with disabilities, or they are lumped together? Is so, my question clear? Yes. yes, your question is very clear. So we do not, uh, there's no specific category, children with disabilities or adults with disabilities. For us, we are more thematic focused and all encompassing. So we encourage both nominations, which are centered around supporting children with disabilities or adults with disabilities. So that being said, you're more than welcome and encouraged to submit your nomination. Uh, we have thematic strands and perhaps a bit on why specifically do we have this year focused on independent living, political participation and ICT. The reason being is we have a four year research cycle, which is already predefined. It's informed by the UNCRPD. In one year, we have employment. In another year, we have education. In another year, we have accessibility. And in this year, we have independent living, political participation, and ICT. Um, Ranilo, does that answer your question? Uh, yes, yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, we have a question also from, from Sharon. She's asking why um, we have early childhood intervention on the independent living. Uh, yes, of course, there is a, there's an overlap uh, also with, with the educational topic. Uh, but we, we thought since we want to have the, the, the whole lifespan uh, included under the independent living umbrella that we include also early childhood intervention this year. Thank you for that, Wilfred. Um, I'm just going to jump in on one question here by PK from Singapore. Hi to Singapore. I'm from there, so nice to see a representative. Um, on the topic of independent living, does the initiative there only meet one of the many subtopics suitable for nomination? Absolutely, it does. Um, the reason we have these subtopics is because we know that a lot of these projects have very niche fo uh, focuses. Um, and so, yes, as long as it hits any one, any single one of the subtopics, please feel free to nominate it. Thank you. I think we, I think we have a tricky one from Vienna uh, with the work readiness skills. Uh, <clears throat> yes, I mean, you have seen under the, the subtopics uh, that we have employment skills, we have the self-employment, the microfinance also, and, uh, uh, and the moving out of, uh, of sheltered workshops. Uh, it depends a little bit. If it's purely uh, employment focused, we would encourage you uh, to come back under the employment topic. Uh, if it is, uh, of, uh, of course, uh, re relating uh, to, uh, to independent living skills in general, uh, then please submit this here. Do we have anyone else who would like to come in with a verbal intervention um, for a question, please? 
simply unmute yourself and uh, identify yourself and your affiliation and ask your question, please. Perhaps then a question from my end, would it be helpful to the audience if we went through the Zero Project call for nominations or the nomination tool website? If so, please raise your hand or write a message in the chat or if there are any aspects of the nomination and what follows which are um, unsure. And I can maybe pull up this slide again of the AWARD journey and really talk about the added value we present to the awardees, because uh, as you can see, there's quite a window between September 2022 and the public announcement. And this is not an empty gap or vacuum, but this is uh, months in which we try to bring in our awardees and place them also at other conferences of our partners. So we just had a, a, someone from our network join us here at the offices in Vienna, talking about the Universal Design Conference in the fall in London. And this is where we would look at our awardees, our recent awardees, and try to understand if these would be uh, suitable speakers. We have had now former awardees of ours, which we have been able to place at conferences such as Davos. So we actively use and utilize our network for our awardees, try to place them both in conferences, but also media placement if the opportunity arises. And we really want to generate a maximum added value for mm -hmm. awardees and um, bring them in wherever we can. So the AWARD journey definitely does not start and end with a Zero Project Conference, but it becomes really a self-sustaining network which thinks on each other's behalf. And if you ask any of our AWARDs, I'm quite certain that they will underline that added value. Question for Susan. Okay. So I... Sorry, I, I see one question in regards to where can we read the subtopics? No, I'll just answer the, the subtopics question, then we can go to scalability. Sure. Um, there's a question from, I'm most probably going to mispronounce the name, so please bear with me. Anuradha Mahesh and, uh, has asked where they can find the subtopics. Hello. And my colleague, Anna Königs Ada, just replied, all subtopics including the definitions you will find on our website and you will see them as little cards, visual cards, which will have the subtopic. And if you click on the card, you will come to a window in which uh, the definitions will be listed. And I will now pass on to my colleague Samita, who will answer the question Hello. of scaling. And I hear someone in the line, um, sir, are, would you like to pose a question? Yes, my name is Martin from Kenya. Yes, hello, Martin. How are you? I'm very fine. Yeah. Martin, would you like to ask a question? Yes, there is a professor. I am a, I am a person with a, I am a person with disability. No. Yes, Martin, we can hear you. Are you getting? Are you getting me yes marston we can hear you please go ahead with your um, question i'm a person with disability in kenya and that is a that is an organization which is doing very well in the perspective by empowering the person living with, with disability they they get them to an education school and help them and they be they be they be they educate themselves mm -hmm. and they get them to courses which they can help them but they are not a white collar jobs they are they are jobs that they are given to do like plumbing mushroom and a lot of things And I'm one of the beneficiaries, but I mm -hmm. have a problem by speaking. I, mm -hmm. my, my, my voice, it is not audible, I know. So Marston, if I understand you correctly, you are, are talking and mentioning as a beneficiary a rehabilitation school in Kenya, 
And do you want yes. to know if you can nominate uh, this innovative practice? I, I want to, 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 to ask if I can be nominated or if I can buy for that seat because you see the, the I'm a person who have a disability and it is a very good thing that you're doing in worldwide because I knew this meeting through through international disability community. Um, yes, Marston, um, we encourage also beneficiaries to nominate. And this is a very, I think, important point which you raise. You can nominate on, on behalf of someone else as well. So you could nominate the rehabilitation school. And in the nomination, there is a contact person field. And in that contact person field, you could put down a contact at the school. And this applies, by the way, to everyone else in the call. If you know of a project which you personally have benefited from or you like very much, you can, of course, in coordination with that entity, nominate on their behalf and put down a contact person um, from that organization. So, Marsden, we would very much encourage you, especially as a beneficiary, to nominate. It's okay, but you know, I, I don't know how you nominate because I'm I'm a new person. I'm a person who is new in this group. So I just heard from my from my colleagues uh, that they would encourage you, and my my colleague will write down the email address of our office. If you will send us an email, we can send you an accessible Word document of the nomination platform as well. And if you're more comfortable in filling out mm. the Word document, we can take it from there. Does that sound good? Yes, it sounds good. I, I, will, I will also share my email now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, my, 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 my colleagues so will, note, not, will note down your email and we will be in touch with you, Marston. Yes, and I have a question. All right, Marston. I'm asking. Mm -hmm. I'm asking if I need your help financially. Can you help? Love. Martin, uh, Marston, was your question about financial details? If I need your financial help, help can you help me financially to... Okay, to I, 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 it's a question about funding. This, yes, Marston. So this is also a, a great question. So the Zero Project in with its awardee program does not provide financial grants or financial awards. Our work is primarily network oriented, where we bring together individuals and also provide them with the impact transfer scaling program, which Sumita mentioned. And I think she'll be answering a question about the scaling program right away. So long, long story short, we do not provide uh, financial funds. But Marston, we have your contact information and uh, we'll be in touch with you. And we really encourage you as a beneficiary to nominate for time's sake to also enable other people to come in with q and A, I I will uh, pass on to Sumita yeah. and she'll answer a question. Thank you, Marston. Thank you for that, Robin. Um, I'm here to answer Kathy's question about uh, mentioning something about awardees for six months support after scalability. Yes, absolutely. This is called the Impact Transfer Program. Uh, one of my colleagues will be pasting a link to it in the chat uh, in a couple of uh, seconds. Essentially, what this means is that not all Zero Project awardees will have access to this. It's only um, awardees that have um, promising scaling and replicating uh, solutions or options or plans um, when they submit to the Zero Project awards. You can find out more using the link uh, that will be shared with you or has already been shared with you. And you can also find out about past awardees, how their replication plans were, and the levels of growth that they were in when they applied for the impact transfer program. And as part of this program, you will be connected with experts, you'll be connected with uh, potential partners, funders, organizations, 
um, as well as also have the opportunity to pitch as part of the impact transfer session that, that will be taking place uh, during the Zero Project Conference. Thank you. So we have, I think, an additional question in regarding the topic of arts and disabilities. And uh, perhaps if I scroll up to the slide in which we mentioned it, and maybe um, since we mentioned it in passing, um, it didn't really uh, cap cap captivate the attention of our audience. We specifically, each and every year, also look for the intersectionality of arts and disabilities. So the idea of how to make arts more accessible, be it in a museum setting, be it for both persons with and without disabilities, how to create more inclusive art. So we definitely encourage nominations from this field, since it is also something which we as the Zero Project are very proud and interested in, um, having also commissioned inclusive arts in the past, especially our founder, Martin Estel. So to answer Mark Subiron's question, um, there is a, a focus and an interest to receive nominations um, which relate to arts and disabilities. I also suffer psychosocial disability. Sorry, Marston, um, did you have another question? I also suffer psychosocial disability. What is what I'm trying to say? Yes, uh, Marston, we are also looking for solutions which which uh, address those of psychosocial disabilities. So um, again, we would encourage you uh, to nominate. We have your contact information and uh, we will reach out to you personally and uh, follow you um, in your nomination journey. My phone number. Do you mean my phone number? No, for, for now, Marston, we have your email address and that suffices. We'll be in, in touch with you via email. And if at a certain point uh, we will require your phone number, we will let you know. Thank you, yes. Robin. Um, I'm just going to jump in and answer the question by uh, Pinar. Um, so if you have questions when you are filling in the nomination form, you can reach out to the office at Zero Project email. Uh, the email address will be posted in the chat in a minute. And this goes for any questions that anyone faces when they're filling out the nomination form or in the lead up to or the follow through from the nomination process. Um, I do urge you not to put your personal information on this chat. Um, this is more for Marston. So if you have any comments or questions, uh, any clarifications at all, please do drop us an email to office at zeroproject.org. Uh, the email address has just been shared in the chat. Thank you. And perhaps just to follow up on that, um, I will ask one of my team members to copy paste the YouTube account URL of the Zero Project. And it is here starting next week that you will find a how-to playlist of every step in the nomination tool. So we have gone and recorded us ourselves filling out a fictional nomination. And there will be videos at every step of the stage on how to nominate. And uh, we encourage you to come back next week. It'll be on YouTube, it'll be an entire playlist so you'll be able to watch certain videos. If you are stuck at any certain step, you can either reach out to the office uh, inbox at office at zeroproject.org or refer to the YouTube videos starting next week. Um, if I could just come in here, Robin, please um, remember that you can always save your draft of your nomination. So it's not like you have to fill in the entire form at one go. So please feel free to save your draft, ask us any questions that you might have and please provide us with as much information as possible. Thank you. We, looking at the watch, we have 13 minutes left in our 60 minutes webinar. So I would encourage everyone to use the time. Now is the time that you have the tension also of the entire Zero Project team. 
Uh, with all the heads available, please uh, ask us any questions which might be on your mind. Um, again, to recap, you can verbally intervene or post a question in the chat. And uh, thank you for the very kind message uh, uh, from TCI Bargavi. And I see a question from Kathy Basterfield, and she asks, can you download all the questions from the, from the nomination before going to the web form? And the short answer is no. However, you can log into the nomination tool. You can copy and paste all the questions into say a Word document and work on that Word document offline. So as Samita just mentioned, you can save your progress at any time. So to give an example, you could now go to the nomination tool, register yourself with name and email address, and through that registration, you'll be able to see the questions, copy paste those questions into a Word document, save it locally on your desktop, work on that nomination. And once you're ready to nominate, go back to the saved nomination form, insert it there, copy paste it, upload any additional supportive materials, as we mentioned, photos, videos, annual reports, and then you'll be able to nominate and submit it. Hopefully that answers your question, Kathy. I'm looking around and listening to my team members. Are there? I, I just received uh, input from one of our team members. If you know someone or if you're not yet on our mailing list, if you go to our website, you can drop your contact details and you will be added to our CRM database. And after that, you will receive regular updates for the Zero Project Call for Nominations 2023. So please send us your contact details um, so we can be in touch with you. And uh, thank you for your um, interest as well. I see a question um, and going up from Sharon Ehrenwald, which asks, after we register and copy the questions, can we change the name of the organization, submitting the name of program, etc.? Yes, you can. Um, your nomination can be edited at any time. This includes contact details. This includes the name of the organization. Uh, as long as you save it, those changes will be reflected. However, one caveat to that is once you officially nominate and submit your nominations, those details cannot be edited anymore. Before that, anytime. So you can log in as many times as you want, make changes, save, log out, you know, sleep on it for a week, come back, make changes, change the language. But at the point of submission, those details will not be able to be changed anymore. I'm hearing that there's an audio line open. Is someone, uh, does someone want to come in with a verbal intervention? I would say with nine minutes left, unless there are any open questions uh, which the team could answer, I would uh, give it one minute and otherwise we'll close out the webinar a bit early. And thank you for your time and interest. You have our office inbox. You have the call for nominations website. And oh, I you. would, yes, Marston. I was asking if I can, I can share the website of the organization that is doing that work via the... Marston, unfortunately, um, the connection is, having... is breaking out. Marston, unfortunately, the connection is breaking out. We would ask you to, to please email us with the open questions you have. We cannot hear you on our end. What I would encourage um, one of our teammates to do is to perhaps also share our personal email addresses. Uh, this goes to everyone who would like to get in touch specifically with Mr. Kainz, 
sitting to the right of me, Mrs. Kunashakaran, our civil society lead, or Mrs. Königsader, our business lead. So you'll have all the info information, including my email as well. If there are, you have any questions specifically for the public sector, we would like to thank you again for uh, really your attention, for your time. We hope that this webinar was informative. And most importantly, we, we hope that maybe this gave you the final push, the final motivation to come forward and to nominate your innovative practice or innovative policy. And we at the Zero Project, and especially our peer review experts, would like to thank you and uh, have a great day.